Hello and welcome back. This is episode number two in our advanced spoken English series. These lessons are designed to help you improve your listening and take your speaking skills to the next level by teaching you advanced vocabulary and conversation phrases. Our topic for this lesson is luck and superstition. You will listen to a conversation on this topic for about 10 minutes. You will see lots of useful vocabulary underlined throughout the video. After the conversation ends, I will teach you the most useful and important vocabulary from the lesson. So let's begin. We're going to talk about luck now. Do you believe in luck? Well, that's a tricky question because uh, it depends on how you define luck. I, I mean, we can't deny that improbable events do happen to people in the world. From time to time, we do hear people say things like, uh, I got lucky in response to something that happened. What sorts of occurrences make people say that? For example, when someone miraculously survives a car accident that should have been fatal, you might hear that person say, I could have died in that accident. I got lucky there. Or uh, if a student takes an exam and they think they're sure to fail, you might see them moping around for a while, thinking about it. But then they get their result and find out that they passed. They might say that they got lucky. So is luck about managing to avoid something negative? Well, that's one side of it. The other side of that coin is obviously when something positive happens, when someone makes a gain. Like uh, if somebody wins the lottery, or let's say a person starts up a small business, and then that takes off all of a sudden and makes that person rich beyond their wildest dreams. Even if that entrepreneur, him or herself, believes that all that success was a result of their own hard work, other people looking on from the outside might say that luck must have been involved. Because uh, how can somebody get so rich so quickly? It must have been luck. And the opposite of this is obviously when something negative happens in the place of a positive result that was expected then that person would consider themselves unlucky. How would you define luck? I think there are two ways to define it. One is to say that uh, sometimes certain events happen in people's lives that don't conform to our expectations. These can be the uh, getting rich overnight variety or they can be the few I dodged a bullet there kind of experience. But in either case, we're saying that something happened for which we don't have an immediate explanation. And the thing that we can't explain, we call luck, and we just leave it at that. That's one way to define it. The other way to define it is when an event happens that seems improbable. To say that something supernatural must have had a hand in bringing that about. And people who believe this typically also tend to believe that they can influence the uh, normal course of events by doing certain things that bring them luck. What sorts of things do they do? A simple example is lucky charms that people carry around. You know, coins, stones, or other little trinkets that they believe either attract good luck to them or ward off bad luck. Another example is, uh, uh, I'm sure you've seen those uh, laughing Buddha statues that people keep in their homes. I get that some people uh, might keep them for decorative reasons, but there's also the belief that if you put them in strategic locations around your home, they will attract wealth into your home. These are some examples. Do you have any lucky charms? Uh, no, not really. I find them to be a little superstitious for my taste. Not that I'm being judgmental of people that believe in them. Maybe they work, maybe they don't, I don't know. It's just that I personally have a different theory as to how luck works. You know, there's a saying that luck is what happens when preparation meets opportunity. I always thought uh, that saying had a nice ring to it because the idea that it expresses is that when opportunities come your way, and maybe that's something you can't control because fortune comes knocking on your door when it does, but when opportunities do come to you, you need to have put in the work ahead of time to be in a position where you can make the most of those opportunities. Otherwise, they will simply uh, pass you by. Uh, I find this to be a much more productive attitude 
in uh, taking on life's challenges than counting on something we can't control, like luck. Is it always true that preparation makes us more lucky? I'm not saying that, you know what, I think the comparative form of lucky is luckier and not more lucky. But, but in any case, uh, I'm not saying that preparation makes us luckier, just that it's no use having all the opportunities in the world if you're not willing to do your part, because it's on you to do what it takes to uh, take advantage of your opportunities. And besides, if you buy a lottery ticket or you play a game of pure chance, like you play a slot machine, I'm not sure that there's any amount of preparation that can do you any good. You know, and since we're talking about preparation, it's quite common for a lot of successful people, like businessmen or sports people, who we know must have gotten to where they are by virtue of their own hard work and dedication, it's quite common to hear them attribute their success in good part to luck by saying that uh, they happen to be in the right place at the right time to have the opportunities that they did. You mentioned sports people. Do you think luck is important in sport? No, I don't believe so. In fact, sports are an area where we see most clearly the importance of preparation as opposed to luck. In pretty much any sport, whether it's an individual or team sport, the outcome of the contest is almost always determined by which side is the better prepared. The better prepared uh, player or team is the one that comes out victorious. I don't think uh, luck has uh, very much to do with it. I mean, sure, it's true that some people just happen to be born gifted athletes, so maybe there's some element of chance involved there, but I don't think luck has any role to play in the competitive aspect of sport. You know, although I have heard that plenty of successful athletes are apparently highly superstitious. Why? What do they do? I've heard that many of them have like a particular piece of clothing, like a lucky pair of shorts or socks that they wear to every single game or match that they play. Some athletes apparently uh, perform certain rituals or have to eat a certain piece of food or listen to a particular song before they step out onto the playing field every single time. And they don't believe that they can go out and perform to the best of their ability unless they do that thing. Why do you think they believe that? Well, most likely because they must have done something once as a matter of course prior to a game and then subsequently had a good performance. So they come to associate their success with the thing that they did. Like if I'm an athlete and I don't particularly listen to music as part of my uh, preparation for a game, but one time I just happened to listen to a certain song in the locker room and then for whatever reason I go out and hit it out of the park, I'm going to think that listening to the song had to have something to do with my performance because that's, that's the thing that stands out. That's the only thing I did differently from what I usually do. So from now on, I'm going to make sure to always listen to that lucky song before every game. And so over time, that evolves into a ritual that the athlete just can't do without. So these are just superstitions? Well, they are superstitions, but I wouldn't say that they're just superstitions because I do think they can certainly serve a useful function. If an athlete gets into the habit of doing a particular ritual before every match or game, then that can help them to get in the right frame of mind. It can help calm their nerves by reminding them that they're on familiar territory. There's nothing to fear. They've done this before. Uh, even if it doesn't do anything to contribute directly to what happens on the field, it can give them a boost of confidence. And so it's not useless. Okay. What can you say in conclusion? In conclusion, I would like to uh, reiterate that the goddess of luck can be capricious and that we are better served relying on what we can control instead, and that is our own effort and application. And that is what allows us to capitalize on the opportunities that life brings us. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, that is the end of the conversation. Let's now go on and learn some useful vocabulary from the conversation. Okay, here we are. After you finish watching the lesson, you can go and download this document from the link in the description. 
Along with the vocabulary that you see here, the document will also contain the complete transcript of the conversation that you heard. Okay, number one is from time to time. This expression means occasionally. Here's the sentence from the conversation. From time to time, we do hear people say things like, I got lucky. That is, occasionally, we hear people say these kinds of things. Number two is improbable. This word means not likely to happen. That is, the likelihood or the probability of an event happening are very low, so we don't expect it to happen. We can't deny that improbable events do happen to people in the world. That is, we can't deny that some events happen in people's lives that are unexpected. Okay, number three is miraculous. Miraculous means very surprising, like a miracle. A miracle is basically an act of God. The sentence is, when someone miraculously survives a car accident that should have been fatal. Fatal means that that person could have died in the uh, accident, so their escape to us seems miraculous. Uh, that is, as if God had intervened to uh, save that person from dying in the accident. Number four is mope around. This is an idiom and it means to waste time doing nothing due to being depressed or unhappy. In the uh, conversation, uh, we saw this sentence in the context of a student uh, who thought that he or she was going to fail an exam. You might see them moping around for a while thinking about it. That is, because they uh, fear that they're going to fail the exam, uh, that student is seen moping around. That is, uh, they appear depressed, uh, lacking energy, not being interested in anything. Okay, let's move on to number five. Number five is take off. Now, in this use, take off is not related to airplanes. It means to suddenly become very successful. Someone starts up a small business and then that takes off, that is that business uh, becomes very successful and makes that person rich beyond their wildest dreams. Beyond their wildest dreams is number six and it means to succeed in an unexpected way. That is, we're saying that uh, that small business in an unexpected way becomes successful, that is, it takes off and makes that person rich in a way that even that person may not have imagined or dreamt. That's why it makes that person rich beyond their wildest dreams. Okay, number seven is dodge a bullet. Dodge a bullet means to narrowly escape a dangerous situation. Think of this idiom like what you might see in an action movie where a bad guy uh, shoots a gun at a hero but then the hero um, moves away you know just in time to avoid getting hit uh, with that bullet. The example or the, or the sentence from the uh, conversation is these, these meaning um, lucky events. Right? These can be the getting rich overnight variety that's one kind of lucky event or they can be the few, I dodged a bullet there kind of experience. That is the kind of experience where someone manages to narrowly avoid some uh, negative results. Okay, number eight is to have a hand in. This means to be involved in creating something. When an event happens that seems improbable, to say that something supernatural must have had a hand in bringing that about. To bring something about means to cause something. So we're saying here that one way of defining luck is to say that uh, something supernatural uh, must have been involved in. Uh, that's what we mean by uh, had a hand. I should make this bold as well. So to say that something supernatural must have had a hand in bringing that about, must have been involved in causing that to happen. Okay, number nine is judgmental. And you see that there are two spellings here of judgmental. One with an E between the G and the M and one without that E. This is the uh, uh, American spelling and this is the one with the E is the British spelling. The word judgmental means criticizing people unnecessarily or too quickly. 
Not that I'm being judgmental of people that believe in lucky charms. I'm saying I'm only expressing my own preference. I'm not being critical. I'm not criticizing people who believe in them. Okay, number 10 is make the most of. To make the most of something means to use something as much as possible. When opportunities do come to you, you need to have put in the work ahead of time. And uh, ahead of time means in advance. So you need to have put in the work in advance to be in a position where you can make the most of those opportunities, where you can use the opportunities that come to you as much as possible. Okay, number 11 is count on. To count on means to depend on or to rely on. I find this to be a much more productive attitude in taking on life's challenges than counting on something we can't control like luck. That is, I don't want to rely on something like luck, which I can't control. Instead, I want to rely on my own effort and my own hard work. Number 12 is by virtue of. By virtue of means as a result of. Businessmen or sports people who we know must have gotten to where they are. That is, we know that most of these people uh, are in the place that they are, are as successful as they are by virtue of their own hard work and dedication. That is, as a result of their own hard work and dedication rather than luck. Okay, number 13 is pretty much. Pretty much means almost entirely. In pretty much any sport, whether it's an individual or team sport, and I went on to say that it's the better prepared side that usually uh, comes out victorious. So what I'm saying is in almost any sport, it's the better prepared side that uh, wins. Okay, number 14 is as a matter of course. As a matter of course means as part of uh, a routine or normal procedure. The question in the conversation was uh, why sports people tend to be superstitious. And the answer is most likely because they must have done something once as a matter of course, just as part of their routine without really thinking about it prior to a game and then subsequently had a good performance. All right, on to our last three items. Number 16 is frame of mind. This means mood or mindset. If an athlete gets into the habit of doing a particular ritual before every match or game, then that can help them to get in the right frame of mind. 